Jiang Xiaobai, a graduate of the economics department in the 21st century, was reborn in 1979 and witnessed the arrival of that era firsthand. Unstoppable, everything grows recklessly, dust and dawn rise, rivers converge into rivers, unnamed hills rise to peaks, and for a moment, heaven and earth are incredibly vast keywords of the novel. Rebirth of the World's Richest Man Without Pop-Ups, download the complete TXT collection of Rebirth of the World's Richest Man, and read the latest chapters of Rebirth of the World's Richest Man. 1. Chapter 1. It's Fighting. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1. Let's fight in the midst of summer, in a remote small mountain village in Shangdang City, Shangxi Province. A boy wearing a washed yellow white cloth shirt lazily lay on the haystack, with a dog tail grass in his mouth. The lower body is a gray pair of pants, which has long been indistinguishable from its original color or the color it has washed and faded. There are still two huge patches on the knee, and a pair of cloth shoes on the feet, but the shoes have already struggled to open a big hole. Jiang Xiaobai is a 21st century undergraduate graduate. And the original owner of this body was born into an ordinary working family in Longcheng, the capital of Jin province, with the same name and surname as Jiang Xiaobai. Recently, he graduated from junior high school and his second brother Jiang Zijian graduated from high school. According to the policy at this time, one person in the family must participate in labor. So his academic performance was not good, and he was sent to the ranks of the working people by his father, who fought and caused trouble with a group of factory children all day. Then he gave himself the opportunity to come here, whether it was a resurrection or a journey through time. Sometimes, even when the memories of the host are fused, Jiang Xiaobai can't distinguish whether he is the 21st century Jiang Xiaobai or this Jiang Xiaobai from decades ago. Although in his past life, Jiang Xiaobai occasionally lamented that he was born out of luck when he drank too much. If he had been born in that golden age full of opportunities and changes, he would have been a wealthy generation, and so on. But he, who had already fully enjoyed the fruits of social change, never thought he would really return to this era. Once upon a time, even those born in the 1980s needed to be called uncles. Would it be appropriate for me to travel back to this era? Jiang Xiaobai stared blankly at the sky. Parents, lovers, brothers, friends, classmates suddenly disappearing without a trace, as if those experiences were like a dream. But Jiang Xiaobai would rather believe that his current experience is a dream. I still live in the 21st century, with loving parents, loving lovers, inseparable brothers, the constant traffic, and a city shimmering with colorful neon lights. Even if you can take another sip of car exhaust. Gu, 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 Jiang Xiaobai shouted from his stomach, as he had been in this era for a whole month. Little Bai, little Bai. A young man ran over when he heard someone shouting his name from a distance. What's so urgent? How many times have I told you to calm down? Stay calm, understand. If you don't calm down, you'll be in pain. After seeing the newcomer, Jiang Xiaobai calmly said, the person who ran over is called Wang Xiaojun. Both his parents and Jiang Xiaobai's parents work in the same factory. He is the second in the family and like Jiang Xiaobai, his father's job position cannot be taken over by him. He is sent to work at the grassroots level. Xiaobai, it's not good, it's not good. Lu Feng and the others are fighting with the villagers. You go and take a look, Wang Xiaojun said panting, his eyes full of urgency as he looked at Jiang Xiaobai. Jiang Xiaobai also got up from the haystack with a rumbling sound, and Lu Feng came to the countryside with Jiang Xiaobai to participate in grassroots labor. Where is it? Hurry up and take me there. Jiang Xiaobai said as he pulled Wang Xiaojun towards the village, asking as he ran, why did Lu Feng and his team conflict with the people in the village? In fact, it is not surprising that urban youth have conflicts with people in rural grassroots and villages. Most of the people who come to work in rural areas are from urban areas, with various social classes, backgrounds, and backgrounds. 
It is not just shouting slogans that can solve the problem of integrating them into the countryside. I heard it was because the work assigned to us people from the city this month was not correct, and then Lu Fong went to the village accountant Gooden to argue, which led to a quarrel. Wang Xiaojun quickly introduced the situation to Jiang Xiaobai. Work division is a slightly historical term. At that time, rural areas implemented collective living simply put, it means that the land belongs to the village, and when it comes to work, everyone goes to do it, and then the village officials record the work points for those who go to work. This work division can be exchanged for money or food based on the output of the village, and is a unique product of this era. During their conversation, Jiang Xiaobai and Wang Xiaojun arrived at the scene, where more than a dozen urban youths were fighting with the villagers. Although there are few young people in the city, they are all young and energetic, and they don't take their actions lightly. On the other hand, although there are many people and great strength in the village, they all have a sense of propriety in their actions. They are afraid of accidents, and instead, the two sides are evenly matched. When Jiang Xiaobai arrived, someone was pulling the strings. Xiao Bai, hurry up and persuade them to stop. If they continue to fight, there will be an accident, Huang Zhongfu said quickly when he saw Jiang Xiaobai coming. Among the urban youth working in the Jianhua Brigade, the largest number are Jiang Xiaobai, the factory children who came from Longcheng. Before Jiang Xiaobai crossed over, he was the elder brother of these factory children in Longcheng. Therefore, among the urban youth in the Jianhua Brigade, Jiang Xiaobai's words are somewhat useful. Branch Secretary, it's all done like this. I guess my words won't have much effect, Jiang Xiaobai said with a bitter smile. In fact, if we follow Jiang Xiaobai's own ideas, it's already the end of June. After this period of time, we will be able to return to the city soon. When the spring breeze of change arrives, that will be the time for us to wait. But now that Lu Feng and his team have started a fight, as a member of the urban youth, I definitely can't sit crooked anymore. I need to find a way to fight for some benefits for the urban youth. Xiao Bai, let's discuss something. Fighting won't solve the problem, and I'll criticize the accountant for being a jerk soon, Huang Zhongfu said confidently as he looked at Jiang Xiao Bai. Originally, he had a good impression of this innocent young man, unlike other city youths who always cause trouble. Now he realizes that this guy is not a fuel dot efficient light either. Okay, Jiang Xiaobai said as Huang Zhongfu let go. He turned around and snatched the white porcelain basin from the hands of a busy old lady, and then picked up a stone from the ground. In the astonished eyes of the ant, the white porcelain bowl made a clang 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 sound, and the white paint on the white porcelain bowl splashed. Stop fighting, stop fighting, Jiang Xiaobai shouted. The city youth heard Jiang Xiaobai's voice and stopped. Huang Zhongfu quickly led people to stop the villagers. Little Bai, they bully people. Xiao Bai, these people are too extreme. They didn't even give us their work scores and cursed us. Little Bai. A group of urban youths spoke up one after another, speaking excitedly. A group of people who could grab three points without paying attention, not to mention feeling wrong this time. This group of people is not very good. The village accountant Gooden quickly spoke up and complained to Huang Zhongfu, but before he could finish speaking, Huang Zhongfu glared fiercely and shut up. Huang Zhongfu turned to Jiang Xiaobai and said, Xiao Bai, let's go to the team headquarters and talk about anything. Okay, then go to the team headquarters. Jiang Xiaobai nodded and took the lead in walking towards the team headquarters. Urban youths such as Wang Xiaojun and Lu Feng quickly followed behind. Let's break up, don't look anymore. What's there to see? I haven't seen you guys being so proactive when I started working, so I've been withholding one job from each of you. Huang Zhongfu looked at a group of villagers who were watching the excitement and preparing to go to the team site, and immediately cursed loudly. As soon as they heard that their work points were to be deducted, the crowd of onlookers suddenly dispersed. Some of the young people who had just fought also wanted to take advantage of the chaos and escape, but were caught by Huang Zhongfu. 
Are you all right? Have you been injured? Jiang Xiaobai asked as he walked, looking at the dozen or so city youths behind him. Although I didn't use any tools during the fight just now, there were also some bleeding from my nose and corners of my mouth. Pu, Lu Feng spat out the blood-stained saliva in his mouth and wiped his nose with blood, saying, Little Bai, we're fine. It's just that dog egg is a bully. Many of us have worked more than twenty jobs this month, but the most we remember about this guy is only thirteen. When we went to find him, he said that we can only work half a day without putting in effort. He even said that it's better not to work for our female city youth. Being able to give us these jobs is already considered good. Lu Feng said with resentment, and the faces of several female city youths in the team were also full of resentment. Xiao Bai, if we can't make up for our work later, we'll go to the commune this afternoon to make a fuss, Wang Xiaojun said on the side. Let's see how Huang Zhongfu will handle it later, Jiang Xiaobai nodded and said, although he started sending urban youth who work in the countryside back to their hometowns this year. But with the implementation of specific policies, if it's not good, I will have to go back next year. I may have to stay in this place for another year and a half, so I absolutely cannot show weakness. Otherwise, my future life will definitely be difficult. End of this chapter 2. Chapter 2 Inflation of Work Points You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Inflation of Work Points The walls of the adobe courtyard are painted with red paint with words such as, Vast Heaven and Earth, Great Potential, and a wooden plaque painted white is hung next to the rusty iron fence door, with the words, Shangma Commune Jianhua Brigade, written on it. A few rough adobe houses were the team site. Jiang Xiaobai pushed open the door and walked in. The group of people didn't need to be greeted, so Wang Xiaojun took out the white porcelain jar from the team site and poured water for everyone. Immediately after, Huang Zhongfu also brought people in, and the two sides began to draw swords and crossbows again. You have the deepest understanding of justice, you have to make the decision for us. A tall and thin young man among the urban youth stood up with a pair of eyes on his thin face. However, combined with his overall appearance, he did not have any gentlemanly appearance, but instead appeared somewhat sharp-tongued and cheeky. Lu Aigua, you fart. Dog Egg immediately opened his mouth and cursed. You see, this accountant is still scolding us in front of you. Did I say it wrong? Look at what they gave me, it's blue and purple, Lu Aigua interrupted the village accountant. Yes, you see, my nose is bleeding profusely. If you have any objections to us, you can raise them, Lu Feng continued. You. The dog's face turned red with anger. That's right, he also discriminates against us female comrades, said a girl with a ponytail among several young women in the city, unwilling to be outdone. If we talk about doing farm work, these urban youths from the city are definitely not as good as village accountants. However, if we talk nonsense, the village accountants are no match at all. The hats are getting bigger and bigger, and the village accountants are buzzing with their heads. Yes, if we don't give an explanation today, we'll go find the leader. Dot. A dozen or so young people from the city shouted with great momentum, but Jiang Xiaobai didn't know. Even though everyone hasn't had enough to eat in the past few days, why do you have so much strength? Did you steal food while I was asleep in the middle of the night? Huang Zhongfu glared at Gooden with hatred, furrowed his brows tightly, and looked at Jiang Xiaobai as if seeking help. On his way here just now, Huang Zhongfu had already roughly understood what had happened. Whether this matter is big or small, if these urban youths really cause trouble in the commune, their faces will not look good, and the village accountant will have to suffer even more. Jiang Xiaobai saw Huang Zhongfu's gaze and raised his hand. The shouting behind him suddenly stopped, and Gooden looked at Jiang Xiaobai with a hopeful expression, hoping that Jiang Xiaobai could say something fair. Accounting is exploiting our urban youth. Jiang Xiaobai said with a smile, but the words in his mouth made Huang Zhongfu and Gooden shiver. Although the others were slapped with big hats, it was actually just a fight, 
and the others couldn't stand it. Xiao Bai, this is too serious. Dog Egg was just momentarily confused. I asked him to apologize for you and make up for the work points he missed for you, Huang Zhongfu said as his voice changed, however, Xiao Bai, you also need to understand Dog Dan. You are all intellectuals, and you also understand the situation of the Jianhua Brigade. They were already poor and unable to solve the problem. Now that the young people in your city have arrived, they have more than ten mouths to eat, making the village even more difficult. Huang Zhongfu spoke, and the young people in the city also fell silent. This is also the truth. The Jianhua Brigade was originally not large, and a large part of it was still mountainous with low harvests. Adding dozens of people at once is indeed a great burden. Jiang Xiaobai also fell silent. After being reborn, although he didn't eat well and didn't have much oil and water at home in Longcheng, he was still able to eat enough. But after being sent to the Jianhua Brigade, I really went hungry and never had enough to eat. This is not just the case with urban youth, but also with the people in the village. It's okay now in June and July, and various wild vegetables in the mountains can still provide a cushion for my stomach. I heard from the people in the village that if we wait until March and April each year when there is a shortage of resources, that will be the real hardship. Many families in the village have one or two people earning wages to support a family of five or six people. The wages in our village are not worth money. Last year, we calculated that one wage was only 10 cents. Now, you have more than 10 people all at once. Each person earns one wage per day, which can earn more than 200 wages per year. You 15 people earn more than 3,000 wages, and the wages in our village are even more worthless. Huang Zhongfu took off the dry tobacco bag hanging on his chest, lit a fire, and took a puff, instantly filling the room with a choking odor. The output value of the village remains unchanged, but the number of working hours will increase. Of course, working hours are even more worthless, which means inflation. Of course, this statement is not yet available. But a group of urban youth are all educated people, and of course, they can also understand Huang Zhongfu's statement. The anger and grievances on the faces of a group of young people in the city have disappeared, and no one has mentioned the words of causing trouble in the commune anymore. At this time, people are still very simple, without the mentality of whether you die or not, it's none of my business. I just want to live a good life, but Jiang Xiaobai took a deep look at Huang Zhongfu, old fox. Just now I was wondering how dare the village accountant dare to deduct the wages of urban youth without authorization, it turned out to be someone behind the scenes. It is estimated that today's event is Huang Zhongfu's exploration of urban youth. If urban youth do not cause trouble and acknowledge it, it is estimated that it will become a tradition in the future. But it is obvious that urban youth are causing a lot of trouble now, and it is no longer feasible to rely on hard work. We can only understand it with emotion and reason. Jiang Xiaobai understood what was going on today, but there was no good solution. The reality is here. Is urban youth wrong? No. Is Huang Zhongfu wrong? I can't say it either. What may be wrong is this era, what is wrong is that everyone is too poor. The reason why urban youth are sent to work is partly to reduce the burden on cities, but rural areas are already poor, and now the burden is even heavier. Jiang Xiaobai pondered deeply, poverty is a disease that needs to be treated. And this era is when the disease is on the brink of death, Jiang Xiaobai muttered, saying some words that others may not understand. End of this chapter Chapter 3 A Group of Small Figures You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 A group of small figures Jiang Xiaobai knows that just this year, the National College Entrance Examination will be held. At this moment, everyone in the three dilapidated adobe houses of the Jianhua Brigade in Shangma Commune, Shandang City, was quietly waiting for Jiang Xiaobai. At this point, everyone did not realize that Jiang Xiaobai was not considering one or two job division issues as they thought. Or rather, it's not entirely one or two job responsibilities. 
For a long time, Jiang Xiaobai stood up from the stool and looked at the dozen or so urban youths behind him, asking, Do you believe me? Xiao Bai, we believe you, Wang Xiaojun was the first to speak. Little Bai, we don't believe you. Who do you believe in? Lu Aigua continued. Xiao Bai, who did you say you wanted to beat up? Lu Feng said and rolled up his sleeves, causing the dog egg to jump back in fear. Xiao Bai, you can tell us what to do. We all listen to you. Little Bai, you say. Xiao Bai. The city youths behind Jiang Xiao Bai spoke one after another. Huang Zhongfu's gaze had been fixed on the door from time to time. Although Jiang Xiao Bai usually looked quite stable, he was still a young man and could not take action. If he did, he would run away early with his old arms and legs. Okay, thank you for your trust. Jiang Xiao Bai, who was originally a young man, became excited as he watched the crowd behind him. Living in this era, with his foresight, could he still be afraid of not being able to eat? It's just that I didn't want to take risks. But now he was forced to take risks by life. Jiang Xiaobai turned to look at Huang Zhongfu and asked, We can only earn half a day by ourselves, but I have three requirements. Listening to Jiang Xiaobai's words, Huang Zhongfu breathed a long sigh of relief in his heart, scared me to death, and quickly said, You said, as long as it is something I can do, I will definitely support it. Gooden's face also softened, while a hint of guilt flashed in his eyes. If it weren't for the poverty in the village, they wouldn't have treated a group of young people like this. Firstly, there are fifteen of us, and it's not too much for a normal person to earn two hundred work points per year, right? Jiang Xiaobai said, looking at Huang Zhongfu. Not much, Huang Zhongfu nodded and said. These young people in the city are all on their own, without a home and little to do. If they really put in a lot of effort to earn work points, they can earn about 250 in a year. Okay, that half is 100 work points. 15 of us have 1500 work points. Take out a piece of land from the village that requires 1500 work points per year to plant, and give it to us. We guarantee that it won't be worse than other villagers, but if you can't get to work, don't worry. Jiang Xiaobai looked at Huang Zhongfu and said word by word, the one Jiang Xiaobai proposed is equivalent to an alternative version of the household contract responsibility system, except that the harvest still belongs to the collective, and the contract is for more than a dozen urban youth, not the family. After speaking, Jiang Xiaobai waited for Huang Zhongfu's answer. As long as Huang Zhongfu agreed, there would be almost no problem. After pondering for a moment, Huang Zhongfu nodded and said, Okay, I promise you. In his opinion, it doesn't seem like much. Those places require the same work points regardless of the type, as long as the production and work points are consistent, it doesn't matter. Of course, the key point is that the harvest in the field still belongs to the village collective. The piece of land by the river, which is about seven acres in size, normally requires 1500 work points to be planted by you. Huang Zhongfu added, of course, we must ensure that the harvest cannot be worse than last year. Jiang Xiaobai nodded and continued, the second requirement is to exchange our work division this year for a portion of grain and money in advance, and the price will be calculated based on last year's work division price. Okay, last year there was still surplus grain and money in the village. A while ago, the village just sold two old sows. Huang Zhongfu said without even thinking about it, and he was not afraid to give this group of young people in the city a chance to run ahead of time. At this time, food vouchers are needed for meals, and introduction letters are needed for going out. If you want to run, there is no place to run. The third requirement is that I will take all the yellow peaches on the back mountain, Jiang Xiaobai nodded and continued. Although Jianhua Brigade doesn't have anything else, the surrounding mountains are particularly rich in fruits during the season, with the most being yellow peaches, which are scattered all over the mountains. However, people still don't realize that this is a resource at this time. No problem. Huang Zhongfu still agreed without hesitation. 
Although Jiang Xiaobai's requests were quite strange, there was nothing difficult to make. 800 caddies of corn flour, 10 caddies of white flour, and 100 yuan are the annual income of 15 urban youth, including Jiang Xiaobai, who were sent to work under the Jianhua Brigade. Of course, there are also two caddies of pork that Jiang Xiaobai insisted on grinding and soaking from Huang Zhongfu. Let's go home. Jiang Xiaobai carried 100 yuan in his arms and waved his hand to lead his head out of the team site. Behind them are 14 urban youths carrying corn and white flour. These 14 urban youths come from all over the country, with backgrounds in factories, intellectuals, and other elements that are not good. There are both men and women, the youngest being only 15 or 6 years old, and the oldest being 23 or 4 years old. At this moment, everyone's face was filled with a young and bright smile, following behind Jiang Xiaobai. They didn't know what it meant to take this step, or they didn't fully know what it meant. Go home, shouted the fourteen city youths behind them, their faces full of excitement. Today, their unchanging lives have changed, and they don't know if this change is good or bad. But they yearn for change, perhaps no matter how bad it is, it won't go any worse. End of this chapter. 4. Chapter 4. The Land of Swallows, Where Dragons and Tigers Crouch. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4. The Land of Swallows, Where Dragons and Tigers Crouch Along the Way, the villagers in the village looked puzzled and envious when they saw the grain and pork carried by Jiang Xiaobai. However, soon the conditions agreed upon by Jiang Xiaobai and the village came out and the villagers no longer envied them. They gave the grain in one go and demanded half of the work. A spendthrift, the dolls from the city just can't make ends meet. Yes, go back and let the children stay away from them. Don't let them learn bad from them, otherwise the whole family will have to follow the northwest wind. A group of people gathered together to discuss. What do you know? They come from the city, and their household registration is provided by the city. They don't even rely on them. Do you think they are like us? An aunt gave a different opinion, her eyes full of envy. Jiang Xiaobai didn't pay attention to other people's discussions and led them all the way back home. The house where Jiang Xiaobai and his companions lived in the Jianhua Brigade was the former landlord's courtyard. The main house, along with eight or nine rooms on the side, had two stone lions at the entrance. The broken lintel at the entrance was adorned with various patterns of carved beams and painted columns, as if still revealing the glory of the late owner. This courtyard was originally used as an office space in the village, but when Jiang Xiaobai and his team arrived, the village was renovated to accommodate these fifteen urban youth. The grains are all stored in the side room to the east. Zhang Yenmei, you take someone to cook, and today it's open for me to eat. The pork has been stewed for me. Jiang Xiaobai looked at a delicate-looking girl and said. Okay, I'll go get some food now. Zhang Yanmei responded and turned around, taking a few girls with her. Eat meat, eat meat, several young men from the city shouted loudly. It has been almost a month now and they have not seen any meat foam. Being able to have a good meal, of course, is extremely exciting. Xiao Bai, isn't it almost interesting to have meat or wine here? It's still early at this time, why don't I go to the supply and marketing agency to buy two bottles of Erguotu and come back? Lu Feng licked his lips and stared straight at Jiang Xiaobai. They all saw just now that Jiang Xiaobai had carried all the hundred yuan in his arms. You're the only one, but this money is being remembered. It has other uses, Jiang Xiaobai said, and Lu Feng and others' heads immediately drooped. Jiang Xiaobai just changed his tone and said, but it's not impossible to get wine without money. Turning his head to Wang Xiaojun, he ordered, Xiaojun, take some grain and go to the old horse head in the east of the village to exchange for some sweet potato liquor. All right, brother. Wang Xiaojun immediately laughed at Jiang Xiaobai's arrangement and responded loudly. Xiao Bai, I'll follow Xiao Jun too. Lu Aigua also said and ran out of the yard with Wang Xiao Jun. 
Lu Feng and others also became excited again, just drink alcohol. At this time, every household's food is not enough to eat, and no one can make wine. However, the old horse head in the east of the village will use sweet potatoes, also known as sweet potatoes, to make wine. Xiao Bai, you're really amazing. When did you know that old Ma Tu would brew sweet potato wine? Lu Feng looked at Jiang Xiao Bai with admiration on his face and asked. Lu Feng, if Xiao Jun brings back the wine and you haven't brought anyone to store the grain in the warehouse yet, you can watch us drink at the bar tonight. Jiang Xiaobai smiled and said, this grandson was still thinking about that 100 yuan just now, which is the starting capital for the future. Brother, I'm going to work now to ensure the completion of the task. Lu Feng stood at attention and respectfully bowed to Jiang Xiaobai, then called for someone to go and release the grain. That's their food for the next three months, so they can't put it directly on the ground. In summer, it's humid so we need to first lay a thick layer of wooden boards on the ground, and then put the grain into a large water tank to ensure that it won't be eaten by mice. Several young women from the city were cooking in the kitchen, occasionally emitting the sound of pots and pans colliding, thick smoke coming out of the chimney, and a fragrant aroma emanating from the kitchen. In the courtyard, the young men from the city were shouting to put the grain into storage, occasionally making powerful and resounding horns. As the sun set in the west, Jiang Xiaobai looked at the vibrant scene of the farmyard with his hands behind his back. The afterglow of the sunset fell on Jiang Xiaobai, making him appear somewhat sacred. The chapter of an era is about to begin, this is just the beginning. Jiang Xiaobai muttered, this is a beautiful era, a turbulent era. As a college graduate from the Department of Economics, he knows the direction of the future. Can he still starve to death? Looking around at this small Jianhua team, Jiang Xiaobai suddenly felt different. It's not easy, it's a treasure trove of feng shui. The ancient said. In the land of Yen, dragons and tigers perch. To the north lies Juyong, while to the west stands Taihang. To the east lies the mountains and seas, overlooking the central plains. To the south lies the Jianghuai River and to the north lies the Shua Desert. There is a support mountain behind, a green dragon on the left, and a white tiger on the right. There is a hidden mountain in front and a famous hall in the middle, with winding water currents. The vast ocean can accommodate 10,000 horses, and such a feng shui treasure land is about to produce great figures. It's just right for me to be reborn now. Can we say that the great figure brewing in this feng shui treasure land is myself? Now I am a hidden dragon in the abyss. When the wind and clouds rise, I will definitely rise up and soar for nine days. A crisp voice interrupted Jiang Xiaobai's reverie. Comrade Jiang Xiaobai. Li Xian stood in front of Jiang Xiaobai, a girl with a ponytail tied, short sleeves with floral patterns, jet black hair, talking eyes, and two sweet dimples on her face when she smiled. With clear water flowing out of hibiscus, the girl who naturally went to carve stood playfully. In the previous life, whenever Jiang Xiaobai watched TV, he felt that the people of that era were too tacky. But when the black ponytail was paired with Li Xian's body, Jiang Xiaobai didn't feel any earthy meaning, instead, it reflected Li Xian's overall purity and beauty. Something's up, Comrade Li Xian, Jiang Xiaobai said with a smile. Li Xian is the most beautiful young woman in the city who comes to work in the Jianhua Brigade. But my personality is a bit cold. Simply put, it's a bit out of sync and can't get along with everyone. For example, everyone is called Jiang Xiaobai, Xiaobai Gu, or Xiaobai, and she is the only one who calls Jiang Xiaobai, Comrade Jiang Xiaobai. What's going on? Do you look down on me? Do I need dignity as a traveler? Jiang Xiaobai is also a bit curious about what she wants from herself. Is that so? I don't know how to cook, and I don't have the strength to carry food. Do you think there's anything else I can do? Li Xian blushed slightly and said with some embarrassment. Looking at Li Xian's expression, Jiang Xiaobai's heart shook and she blurted out, Yes. 
I just regretted it after saying it. My mouth is cheap. In this era, giving a scarf as a token of love is like making a joke with a girl. If you don't propose to someone else, I will show you every minute. Jiang Xiaobai regretted it in her heart, but saw Li Sian's face full of confusion. End of this chapter. 5, Chapter 5 No matter how bad it is, where else can it go? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 No matter how bad it is, where else can it go, what can I do? Li Sian asked with a bewildered expression. Just do whatever you can, Jiang Xiaobai casually said, turning his gaze elsewhere. Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua had already returned with wine. Two and a half caddies of sweet potato liquor. Little Bai, do you want to taste authentic? Wang Xiaojun offered a bottle in his hand to Jiang Xiaobai as if offering a treasure. All right, if you've tried it, I won't try it anymore. Hurry up and help Lu Feng and his team. Jiang Xiaobai knew by smelling the smell of alcohol on Wang Xiaojun's body. Wang Xiaojun chuckled and remained silent. He turned around and placed two bottles of wine on the table, then went to help Lu Feng and the others. As the sky gradually darkened, the electric lights in the yard lit up for the first time as Jiang Xiaobai and the others moved in. I used to light kerosene lamps every day, and in rural areas, I couldn't even afford candles. At this time, although some rural areas have already been electrified, the price of 1 kilowatt hour electricity has remained at 50 cents, and in some places it has even reached prices of 1 yuan or 1.5 yuan. That's it, and they often cut off the power supply, so in rural areas, the lights are basically just a decoration. It wasn't until the late 1980s and early 1990s when electricity prices returned to normal that rural areas were basically electrified. Fortunately, the electricity boss gave face tonight and did not cut off the power limit. The aroma of the food wafted from the yard, causing many people to secretly swallow their saliva. Several female city youths were busy with their last dish in the kitchen, while the male city youths had already sat around the table. The dishes were all ready soon, and four eight immortals' tables were put together. In a few years, they would still be considered antique tables. At this time, no one cherished them, and some of the eight immortals' tables even cut firewood and set fire. Big meat slices constantly float with pork stewed noodles, verdant cold mixed wild vegetables, golden fried eggs, sour and spicy potato shreds, and corn flour pancakes. This is a sumptuous gathering meal, not to mention in this place, even before cutting in line, such meals are not often available. Of course, Jiang Xiaobai is an exception. Before his rebirth, although he was not a wealthy second generation, he also had no worries about food and drink. Many people are watching the table full of food, swallowing their saliva non-stop, staring straight at the food on the table, waiting for a command to start eating. Wang Xiaojun quickly poured a glass of wine for everyone. Jiang Xiaobai stood up slowly from his seat with a glass in his hand, looked at fourteen young people in the city, and said, Comrades, brothers and sisters, it's fate for us from all over the world to get together today. Let's have a toast. After Jiang Xiaobai finished speaking, he drank the white porcelain jar in one gulp, and the others also drank a glass. Putting down his glass, Jiang Xiaobai's gaze swept over everyone. What happened today, I believe everyone knows that this Jianhua brigade is very poor, and they are so poor that they can no longer afford it. One worker earns one cent, have you heard of it? In other affluent villages, one worker can earn up to fifty cents or even eighty cents. Jiang Xiaobai paused for a moment and continued, I believe everyone knows the situation we are facing now. We are out of food, and it is summer now. Everyone is fine. If we really wait until next spring when there is no harvest, we may not be able to survive. Jiang Xiaobai said, and everyone fell silent. Even the most lively Lu Feng lowered his head and remained silent. This is a fact that no one can avoid. Because everyone came over like this a month ago, and according to the villagers, March and April were even more terrifying. 
The food on the table is quite delicious, but I think everyone knows how this meal came about today. So I'll ask everyone, do you want to endure hunger or just drink and eat meat? Jiang Xiaobai looked at everyone and asked loudly. Drinking and eating meat. Fourteen young people in the city roared, even Li Cyan's face turned red. Okay, since you want to drink and eat meat, you definitely have to take risks. Later, I will tell you our next plan. If there is something we don't want to do, we can also withdraw, but if we decide to do it, we can't betray everyone. Jiang Xiaobai said in a deep voice, there is no other way. In this era, one must be cautious when doing something. The household contract system in Xiaojiang village is also based on blood and fingerprints. Xiao Bai, just tell me how to do it. No matter how bad it is, where else can it go? Big guy said, right. Lu Feng stood up excitedly. Yes, Xiao Bai, you can do whatever you want. I've had enough of these days. Wang Xiaojun smashed the white porcelain jar in his hand heavily on the table, and several pieces of paint fell off the already worn white porcelain jar. Xiao Bai, please speak up and we'll listen to you. Comrade Lu Feng is right. These days are already like this, but no matter how bad it is, where else can it go? We need to change, we need to drink and eat meat all at once. Jiang Xiaobai looked at everyone's reaction and continued, it's the end of June now. The yellow peaches scattered all over the back mountain are our precious wealth, so my plan is to make canned yellow peaches. After Jiang Xiaobai finished speaking, everyone exploded and started discussing one by one. Making canned peaches is easy, but what about the glass bottles used to hold peaches? Yeah, if you want a glass bottle, you have to go to those state-owned factories, but how could those state-owned factories sell glass bottles to us? Yeah, this is not something that can be solved with money, and we don't have any money either. Jiang Xiaobai listened to everyone's discussion with a pleased smile on his face. There must be difficulties, but what Jiang Xiaobai was most afraid of was talking about making canned peaches. The discussion was not about the difficulties of making canned peaches, but about not daring to make them. Quiet, everyone listened to Xiaobai, Wang Xiaojun said as he looked at Jiang Xiaobai's expression. After everyone quieted down, Jiang Xiaobai spoke up and said, I know there are difficulties. What's not difficult is to go to work and earn points, but can that be enough to eat? In this way, everyone listen to my arrangement. Tomorrow, Zhang Yanmei will lead someone to vacate two rooms in our house, preparing to become a factory for making canned peaches, okay, Zhang Yanmei nodded in response, this was the easiest one. Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua, you two and I will go to the county town tomorrow to see if we can buy glass bottles. All right, little white brother. Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua agreed in unison, and among the young people in these cities, Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua were just talking nonsense. Lu Feng, take the remaining people to the back mountain and roughly clear out a path up the mountain. Okay, Xiao Bai. It's already the end of June now, and the yellow peaches have begun to ripen. We must seize the time. Whether to eat meat and drink alcohol this winter or endure hunger depends on this time. Jiang Xiao Bai looked at everyone and said solemnly. Don't worry, Xiao Bai. As long as it's a task assigned by you, we will definitely complete it seriously. Yeah, little white brother, don't worry. Don't worry, Xiao Bai. As soon as they said they were eating meat and drinking, everyone immediately became full of enthusiasm. Okay, drink and eat meat. The white porcelain jars collided and made a crisp sound, and the lights in the yard didn't go out until very late. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 County Glass Factory You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 County Glass Factory After a night of silence, the next morning after breakfast, Jiang Xiaobai set off with Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua. To go to the county town, you need to walk to Shangma Township before you can take a car. Jianhua Brigade is 30 miles away from Shangma Commune, which is not the farthest village from Shangma Commune. 
Jiang Xiaobai and his companion set off at 8 o'clock in the morning, and only after 10 o'clock did they arrive at the Shangma commune, walking for a full two hours. There are many people coming and going in the small town, and the people sitting on the ox and horse carts shouting are full of arrogance and coquettishness, even more impressive than those who drive in later generations. The supply and marketing cooperative Painted Green is the only new house in the village and the busiest place, with many people coming and going. At this moment, those who want to work in supply and marketing cooperatives are already overwhelmed. Who could have imagined that they would disappear without a trace in the following few decades? Jiang Xiaobai and his companions breathed a sigh of relief and slowed down as they saw many people under the signs at the village car stop. At this time, buses from the village to the county run once a day in the morning and once in the afternoon. When the bus will arrive at this time is simply not on time. If you miss it, you'll have to wait for the afternoon. After waiting for a while, the old bus came unsteadily, emitting black smoke. As soon as the car door opened, everyone crowded towards the bus, carrying big and small bags one by one. Going to the county town was no less than going on a long journey in later generations. Jiang Xiaobai and the other three were empty-handed, and the ticket seller even glanced at them. I grabbed a seat and sat down, and soon the bus set off unsteadily. A smell of gasoline seeped straight into the carriage, but there was nothing unusual except for Jiang Xiaobai, and many people even liked to smell the smell of gasoline. Two cents per person, hurry up and buy the ticket. The ticket seller started selling tickets. At this time, people earn less, but prices are also cheap. The bus travels on bumpy roads, as if it can break down at any time, and the people inside are like riding a roller coaster. Auntie, we are urban youth who have come down to work and have never been to the county town. Can you introduce us to us? Jiang Xiaobai looked at the ticket seller next to her and said with a smile. You guys are city youths who come down to work, I'm telling you. You guys got on the car empty-handed, said the old lady with a sudden realization on her face. Anyway, she had nothing to do and started chatting with Jiang Xiaobai. Jiang Xiaobai appeared to be listening attentively, occasionally interjecting to ask about what he needed. After inquiring with his aunt, it was found that there was indeed a glass factory in the county, but it was located in the suburbs of the county, about five miles away, which was not too far. After wandering for two hours, at noon, the bus finally drove into the county town. The road conditions finally improved, and Jiang Xiaobai turned his head to look at the scenery outside the car window. There were many people coming and going, and Jiang Xiaobai even saw a few bicycles. The young man riding a phoenix bike on the 28 bars, his eyes almost flying into the sky, his thumping appearance filled the surrounding people with envy. At this time, there are not many people in the county who can afford bicycles for over 100 yuan, but there are definitely some. But there aren't many people who can get bicycle tickets. Jiang Xiaobai and the other three are not locals, except for their second visit on the day they came to report. Jiang Xiaobai got off the car and didn't rush to the county glass factory. He took out the corn flour pancake he brought out in the morning. The money on Jiang Xiaobai's body, aside from needing to buy white sugar and glass bottles, cannot be moved temporarily. Even if it can be spent at this time, there is no place to ask for your money. If there are acquaintances, it's okay. At this point, there are already privately opened restaurants, but none of them have signs, and without acquaintances leading the way, you won't be able to find them. The three of them took a sip and rested on the roadside for a while before finally heading towards the county glass factory. Before reaching the factory, they saw a towering chimney emitting black smoke. Jiang Xiaobai knew he must have found the right place. It can be said that firing glass is not a sophisticated technique. The main reason for firing glass is that it causes a lot of pollution. Of course, at this time, there is no such thing as environmental protection. Arriving at the factory gate, the old man who had not yet waited for Jiang Xiaobai and his three companions to enter the gatehouse came out and looked at Jiang Xiaobai and his three companions asking, What do you comrades do? What's up? 
Grandpa, what is your surname? We are from Shanhua Commune and from Jianhua Brigade, Jiang Xiaobai said, taking out the front door he had specially bought in his pocket and handing it over to Grandpa. What's your surname or not? My surname is Wang, just call me Lao Wang too. You guys have come to the Ma Commune before. Let's talk about it. The weather is quite hot. The old man took the cigarette handed over by Jiang Xiaobai and said, making way for his position. Jiang Xiaobai entered the gatehouse with Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua. Jiang Xiaobai casually left the cigarette in his hand on the gatehouse table, and the gatekeeper's expression became even more kind. Take out a few white porcelain jars, pour a glass of water for each of the three people, and ask with a smile, what are you doing at our glass factory? The leaders have already finished work at this point, and they won't be back to work until 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Mr. Wang is like this. We want to buy some glass bottles and look for our sales department, Jiang Xiaobai took the water and thanked him before saying. The sales department is located on the second floor of the factory office. After starting work in the afternoon, you can go there. Now, you can rest here for a while. Let me tell you, Mr. Song, the head of the sales department, is quite good, unlike that workshop. The master doesn't know if it's just like this on a regular basis or because of smoking, so he has a vague and inexhaustible meaning. Jiang Xiaobai is also willing to accompany the grandfather to chat and learn about the situation of some glass factories. There are more than 300 people in this county's glass factory, which is the only glass factory in Jiangxian County. Its main business is the glass of doors and windows. Of course, there are also some gossip about the glass factory that Jiang Xiaobai has memorized one by one. For example, the factory manager's father was hospitalized a while ago, the factory flower had an affair with the director of the production workshop, and the most gossip in the factory was about who the factory manager was. Of course, Jiang Xiaobai didn't believe the last point. He felt that the most gossip was about the old man Wang from this gatekeeper. It's almost time, let's go in and take a look, Mr. Wang. Jiang Xiaobai interrupted Mr. Wang, who was somewhat unsatisfied. Okay, it's time for work at this point. You guys go in and take a look. Mr. Wang looked at the yellowed clock hanging on the wall, which was already 2.30 p.m. As soon as they left, Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua breathed a long sigh of relief, while Jiang Xiaobai smiled and walked towards the factory office in the direction instructed by old Wang. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Insufficient Funds You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Insufficient Funds At this point, I have already started working. Normally, the factory should be busy, but the workers coming and going seem particularly leisurely. In fact, at this time, state-owned enterprises have already begun to decline, just like rural migrant workers. However, the factories at this time are truly dominated by workers. Even if you are a leader and there is no major issue, it is basically impossible to dismiss a worker. Things like absenteeism and tardiness, without the need for punishment, are impossible to criticize even a few words, and of course, it is even more impossible to deduct money. Deducting money workers can play their lives with you. Entering the factory building, I heard the sound of chatting in some offices and occasional loud laughter. Jiang Xiaobai shook his head somewhat helplessly. In fact, many of the older generation still have feelings for state-owned enterprises. They were born in factories, went to school in factories, worked in factories, and got sick and sought medical treatment in factories. A larger factory is actually like a small kingdom, where many people are closely related to the factory from birth to death. But the older generation emphasizes dedication and the spirit of hard work. However, with the development of the times, it is useless to focus solely on spirit and dedication. Bang 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 bang. Jiang Xiaobai knocked on the door of the sales department head. Come in. A deep voice sounded from inside, and the owner of the sound should not be very old. Jiang Xiaobai pushed the door and entered, only to see a man wearing a blue work uniform sitting behind a desk, writing and drawing. 
He didn't know what he was busy with, but when he saw Jiang Xiaobai and the others come in, he just looked up and continued to work on himself. Comrades, do you have anything to do? Song Weigua asked without looking up. It's like this, we want to buy some canned glass bottles, said Jiang Xiaobai. Upon hearing this, Song Weigua put down his pen and looked up at Jiang Xiaobai, asking, come and sit down. Which canning factory are you from? He then called out to the door, Xiao Lu, come and make a pot of tea. Jiang Xiaobai watched as Song Weigua's attitude changed and remained silent. After brewing the tea, he said, we're not from a canning factory. It's not from a canning factory, so why do you say you're buying glass bottles? Who the hell are you? Song Weigua's expression slightly darkened. We are from the Jianhua Brigade of Shangma Commune. This year, the yellow peaches on the mountain have matured, and we are planning to buy some glass bottles to make them into cans. Jiang Xiaobai didn't dare to say that he wanted to make them into cans for sale. All right, hurry back. We are a glass factory, and you can go to the supply and marketing cooperative to see if you have the glass cups you need. Song Weiguo waved his hand as soon as he heard Jiang Xiaobai's words, ready to rush people. A bottle that came from a village to buy canned goods actually came to a glass factory. It's really insightful. How many bottles do you want? Can I still make them for you alone, treating our glass factory like a small workshop? We need a large quantity, there are many yellow peaches growing on the mountain this year. Jiang Xiaobai understood what Song Weigua meant and tried to explain, but before he could finish speaking, Song Weigua interrupted him. Comrades, why don't you go back and take a look at the supply and marketing cooperative? Song Weigua casually waved his hand and sat back behind his desk. Jiang Xiaobai's words made him even more ignorant. There are many peaches that can be made into cans or glass bottles. How many can you buy? Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua looked at Song Weigua's indifferent expression and contemptuous expression, with a hint of anger on their faces. It only made Jiang Xiaobai stare and continue to sit obediently. You don't know how difficult our rural areas are. Our rural areas are poor, unlike you state-owned large factories. When we were struggling this year, we had to endure hunger, and the village was almost starving to death. Jiang Xiaobai lowered his head slightly, and when he lifted his head again, his eyes were already red. In fact, he didn't want to sell poorly. But at this time, doing business with state-owned factories is like this. They don't like to make money, what can you do? You little comrade, what are you doing? Didn't I tell you? You go to the supply and marketing cooperative to see if there are people selling glass bottles. Song Weigua looked at Jiang Xiaobai with a hint of helplessness on his face and put down the pen he had just picked up. We really don't want to trouble you, but if the yellow peaches on the mountain are not canned, they won't be preserved. When it comes to winter, we'll be. Jiang Xiaobai continued. This little comrade, it's not that I'm not helping you. Our factory specializes in making door and window glass, and if we want to burn glass bottles, we need to create a separate production line and specialized molds. The quantity you require is too small, and I can't help you. How many do you need to order in order to make a canhead bottle? Jiang Xiaobai stopped complaining and said everything for this reason. It's no use crying anymore. As long as you have the intention to help, then if the conditions are negotiated, it's okay. We need at least 10,000 glass bottles before we can fire them. One costs 20 cents, which means it costs 2,000 yuan. Can you take it out? Song Weigua casually said that if 2,000 yuan were placed in later generations, it would really be nothing, but if it were placed now, it would really be a huge sum of money. Hee <laughs> hee. Jiang Xiaobai chuckled twice, what else could he say? Can we reduce it a bit, such as? For example, how many? 8,000, Song Weigua asked. Is a thousand okay? We will definitely need more goods later. Jiang Xiaobai tentatively asked. In fact, 
The 100 yuan he had with him was only enough to buy 500 canned bottles, but he didn't feel embarrassed to keep so much in one breath. Yes, Chief Song, don't worry. When we go back, we'll mobilize people from other villages to pickle canned peaches. We'll definitely be able to eat the rest of your goods, Wang Xiaojun quickly spoke up. All right, comrade, you guys go back first. I still have something to do on my end. As Song Weigua left with his bag in his hand, Jiang Xiaobai and the other three looked at each other inside the room. Xiaobai, let's go back. It's not a good idea to see this, Wang Xiaojun said. Well, let's go first and think of other ways. Jiang Xiaobai nodded. As the three of them left the factory and the glass factory gate, old Wang poked his head out of the window and looked at the three of them, asking, what's wrong with this? The matter hasn't been completed. Well, Grandpa Wang, let's go first, Jiang Xiaobai nodded and said. What's going on? It shouldn't be. The sales of glass products in the factory are currently sluggish. How could Xiao Song push door dot to dot door transactions? Old Wang came out of the gatehouse and curiously looked at Jiang Xiaobai and the others, asking. Go in and say. Jiang Xiaobai looked at Old Wang and his eyes rolled as he entered the gatehouse. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Peak Turn You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 8 Peak Turn in the Gatehouse, Jiang Xiaobai repeated what he had just said to Song Weigua to Lao Wang Tu, his expression even more sorrowful, making the listener cry when he heard the sadness. Xiao Bai, it's not that Xiao Song didn't help you. Things are really difficult to handle. Our factory mainly produces door and window glass. If we want to fire can head bottles, we need to make new molds. Recently, a canning factory in the city came to us and ordered 20,000 bottles for the first batch of goods. The factory only made new molds, but unfortunately, after firing them, they couldn't meet their requirements. So many canned bottles are still in the warehouse, which is really a pity. As Mr. Wang spoke, Jiang Xiaobai's eyes lit up and he stared closely at him, asking, can you take us to see that batch of waste? They are all fired and do not comply with their regulations. What's the use of a pile of waste? Old Wang couldn't continue his words, and suddenly he realized something. The key to the warehouse is with me. You're lucky, you're lucky. If you come a few more days later, maybe we'll buy it as scrap. Mr. Wang took out a string of keys from the cabinet and led Jiang Xiaobai and the others out towards the warehouse. With a loud bang, Jiang Xiaobai pushed open the door of the warehouse and saw wooden boxes neatly placed on the ground. Old Wang opened one of the boxes and showed Jiang Xiaobai and his team a canned bottle. Jiang Xiaobai took it over and looked at it. In fact, there was no problem with the bottle. It was just that there were some bubbles in the middle of the canned bottle, which were generated during the glass production process due to technological reasons. It was very normal for such problems to occur in the production process at this time. The reason given by the other party's factory is that there are bubbles, but there are rumors that it is because the other party has changed the design drawings and wants to change to a glass factory for production. There are also rumors that it is because the other party's factory has opened a new production line and this type of business is no longer outsourced. Old Wang explained to Jiang Xiaobai on the side, you see, for this batch of goods, we also specialize in producing canned lids. Well, Jiang Xiaobai nodded excitedly and asked, who is in charge of this batch of waste, and how are you going to handle it? It's also under the management of the sales department, you still have to find Xiao Song, said old Wang as he walked out of the warehouse with the three of them reluctant to leave. Okay, let's go to the factory office and wait. Jiang Xiaobai exclaimed excitedly, there's really no place to find a place to break through the iron shoes. The willows are dark and the flowers are bright. I thought the old man was a bronze, but I didn't expect you to be a king. I saw him go out just now. You can wait in my gatehouse and see him as soon as you come back. Old Wang warmly invited him, 
but Jiang Xiaobai naturally showed no respect and followed old Wang back to the gatehouse. It's just that Jiang Xiaobai has been waiting from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and hasn't seen old Song come back. So, you guys go back first. It seems like you won't come back today. Come back tomorrow, said old Wang to Jiang Xiaobai as he watched the factory workers finish work. Okay, then what? Grandpa Wang, tell me where his family lives. Tomorrow morning, I'll wait for him at his doorstep. Jiang Xiaobai nodded and said. You little comrade really have a serious attitude, old Wang said with a smile as he looked at Jiang Xiaobai and told him the address of Song Wei's country. Jiang Xiaobai, Wang Xiaojun, and Lu Aigua did not leave immediately after coming out of the glass factory, but waited until around 8 p.m. in the evening. It's impossible for Song Weigua to come back today, so he walked towards the county. Xiao Bai, here's a cake for you. Lu Aigua took out a piece of corn flour cake from his arms and handed it to Jiang Xiao Bai as he walked. The three of them had no water and ate a few pieces of corn flour pancakes, finally suppressing their hunger. Today is the fifteenth day of the lunar calendar, with the moon hanging high in the sky. Jiang Xiaobai and his companions walked towards the county town under the moonlight. Tonight, we'll just find a place in the county to make do with the night. Tomorrow, we'll try to finish the canned bottles early in the morning. Jiang Xiaobai walked and said, when I came out in the morning, I told others that it's not easy to come to the county town. Maybe I won't go back tonight and will come back the next day. Well, Xiaobai has listened to you. Xiao Bai really owes it to that gatekeeper today. Otherwise, we might have returned empty-handed, Wang Xiaojun said excitedly. Yes, Xiao Bai, if it weren't for your good relationship with the gatekeeper, this matter wouldn't have happened today. Lu Aigua smiled and said, but their eyes were somewhat unnatural. Jiang Xiao Bai seemed to know what the two of them were thinking and said, Do you think we've been wrong today? No, little white brother. How could it be? It doesn't matter when we arrive, mainly because we feel that you are too wronged. The two quickly waved their hands and denied. This is doing business. If you want to gain more than others, you have to give more than others. Today, we are compromise and compromise, so that we don't have to compromise and compromise in the future. After Jiang Xiaobai finished speaking, he didn't care if the two understood or not, so he stopped talking. In fact, it goes without saying that Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua, as a person living in the 21st century, Jiang Xiaobai has never suffered such injustice. If it weren't for being reborn in this era, I might not even have the qualifications to compromise. But since God has reborn me in this turbulent era, I must seize the opportunity to pursue a career. When the three of them returned to the county town, the streets were already empty, with occasional pedestrians passing by. Jiang Xiaobai walked around for a while, taking Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua back to the entrance of the supply and marketing cooperative. All right, there are still a few wooden boards there, and this place is also spacious. Let's sleep here tonight, Jiang Xiaobai said, and began laying the several wooden boards leaning against the outside of the supply and marketing cooperative on the ground. At this time, there were no later generations. Small hotels were everywhere, and there was only one guesthouse in the entire county. However, if you want to stay in the county and receive all the money, you still need a letter of introduction. It goes without saying that Jiang Xiaobai never went to the team site to open a letter of introduction before coming, and even if he did, he couldn't bear it. He only had 100 yuan with him, which was the start.up fund for 15 urban youth, and every penny had to be spent on the cutting edge. Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua saw that Jiang Xiaobai was lying down, without any complaints, and they also followed along with the paved wooden boards. Anyway, it's June and July at this time, and the weather is hot. Sleeping outside is nothing except for a little more mosquitoes. Jiang Xiaobai lay on a hard wooden board, looking at the bright moon in the sky. Unconsciously, scenes from his past life surged into his heart. My mind was full of thoughts, I couldn't distinguish whether it was a dream or reality, 
and I didn't know when I would fall asleep. End of this chapter. 9, Chapter 9 Done. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Getting It Done When Jiang Xiaobai woke up from his sleep, he heard the voice of passers-by, who were discussing why the three of them were sleeping here. When I opened my eyes, it was almost light, and I felt itchy. The first mock examination found that mosquitoes had bitten countless bags all over her. Quickly waking up Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua, he took out a crumpled grain ticket from his arms and handed it to Wang Xiaojun. Go and buy some mantu. This food coupon was obtained by Jiang Xiaobai's father before he cut in the queue. Jiang Xiaobai has been reluctant to use it. Okay, brother Bai. Wang Xiaojun took the food ticket, sat up from the hardboard, moved his neck, and went to the food station to exchange mantu with the food ticket. Jiang Xiaobai and Lu Aigua restored the wooden board to its original state, and then asked passers-by where the address of Song Wei's country was. When Wang Xiaojun bought mantu, one of the three people ate two white flower mantu in a hurry, just like Zhu Beiji ate ginseng fruit. The remaining two mantu were held in paper bags, and Jiang Xiaobai was reluctant to eat them. The three people walked towards the direction of Song Wei, who lived in the county seat and was not far away from the supply and marketing cooperatives. It was only about ten minutes' walk. The three of them sat down against the wall at the entrance of the alley, waiting for Song Weigua to come out of work. People passing by in the morning would look at the three of them in confusion, and even those with warm hearts wanted to bring them some food to eat. At around eight o'clock in the morning, the sun had already risen very high, and Song Weigua finally rode his bicycle out of the alley. Jiang Xiaobai and the other three quickly rushed forward, and suddenly three big living people jumped out startling Song Weigua. After seeing the person clearly, Song Weigua breathed a sigh of relief and got off his bicycle, asking impatiently. How did you find this? I told you yesterday that our factory cannot buy it for you. If you need to go to the supply and marketing cooperative to buy it, why are you so stubborn? Even if you keep pestering me, it's useless. Did Section Chief Song have breakfast? Try the hot mantu, which was just bought from the food station. Wang Xiaojun finally turned his head after yesterday's experience, and Li Sua's mouth finally came into use. I will push the cart for you and you will eat mantu. Lu Aigua also took the bike from Song Weigua quickly. I tell you not to do this. Even if you say that it is impossible for our factory to produce canned bottles for you, Song Weigua said with a wry smile, saying that he would not accept the mantu delivered by Wang Xiaojun. He didn't want to help, but he couldn't help. We're not here to have the factory produce canned bottles for me, said Jiang Xiaobai. Isn't it that the factory produces canned bottles for you? Song Weigua asked with some confusion as he listened to Jiang Xiaobai's words. Well, I heard that our factory has a batch of unwanted cans and bottles to dispose of. Jiang Xiaobai said with a smile. Scrap can head bottles. Song Weigua muttered, his eyes lit up. Yes, why didn't he think about it yesterday? He just thought that Jiang Xiaobai and his team needed to design new molds like the canning factories in the city, so he didn't remember those batch of can head bottles. Where did you get the news from? Song Weigua asked curiously as he looked at Jiang Xiaobai. You don't need to worry about it. We have our communication channels, do you think we need to handle it? Jiang Xiaobai asked with a smile. There is indeed such a thing, but if you don't mention it, I'll almost forget. You guys are ready. Song Weigua's last three words, how much do you want, were interrupted by Jiang Xiaobai before he could say it out. We're going to see where the factory is going to dispose of this batch of waste, and then we'll pick it up and use it again. Director Song, you know us rural people. Jiang Xiaobai began to pretend to be foolish and complain again. Are you coming less? Your rural areas are suffering. Yes, our rural areas are tough. Why don't you think so? We'll take people and take them directly from the warehouse, saving you trouble. We don't need any wages, just pay for a meal. 
Of course, if you really feel guilty and give us some wages, then we'll be disrespectful. Jiang Xiaobai didn't finish speaking, but Song Weigua snatched his bicycle from Lu Aigua and was about to leave. He had never seen someone with such thick skin before. Don't, we were just joking with you. We really want to buy it, Jiang Xiaobai quickly grabbed the back seat of Song Weigua's bicycle. Okay, let's talk while we walk. Song Weigua twitched at the corner of his mouth. Are you joking? If I dare to promise you, I believe you dare to empty the warehouse without saying a word. Hey, I'll pay three cents for such a bottle, Jiang Xiaobai responded. Fifteen cents, I won't ask for it at the price that the factory sells to the canning factory in the city. For cents, no one else will buy your batch of canned bottles except us. One cent, it can't be any lower. The quality of our batch of products is very good, to be honest, it's just a bunch of things from the canned food factory going back and forth. Five cents, you need to understand our farmers' difficulties. Eight cents, the lowest price, I'll take care of it if you don't want it. Five cents, you'll have to add labor costs to handle it. After a few rounds of back and forth between Jiang Xiaobai and Song Weiguo, the transaction was made for five cents per can bottle, which was a quarter of the market price. Jiang Xiaobai's smile could no longer hide. Okay, with your mouth open, come on, how many canned bottles do you want? Song Weigua said somewhat helplessly that agreeing to this price was partly due to Jiang Xiaobai's poor sales. Otherwise, with the current personality of state.owned factories, they wouldn't buy it to you even if they didn't want to break it for a penny. I'll take 5,000 first. I'll give you a 1.3 deposit of 83 yuan, and I'll give you the remaining money in three months. After Jiang Xiaobai finished speaking, he saw that Song Weiguo was ready to refuse and quickly resumed the mode of complaint. Chief Song, you also know that our rural areas have not yet received all the grain. Song Weiguo hesitated for a moment. It was normal to pay a 1.3 deposit when buying something. The canned food factory had already paid a 1.3 deposit in advance, and now it would not be a loss to buy it to Jiang Xiaobai's factory at a quarter price. If Jiang Xiaobai represented other state.owned factories, Song Weiguo would have agreed without hesitation, but now Jiang Xiaobai represents himself. As farmers, every word we speak is like spitting on a nail. In this way, when we sign the contract, I not only want you to have these 5,000 can-head bottles, but I also want the remaining 15,000 can-head bottles. If you can't buy them before the Chinese New Year this year, then I will make up for these 5,000 can-head bottles for you at a price of one cent. Jiang Xiaobai patted her chest and said with great righteousness. Okay, you little comrade has courage. After we go back and sign the contract and pay the money, you can go pick up the goods. Song Weigua gave Jiang Xiaobai a deep glance and agreed. End of this chapter 10 Chapter 10 Spring River Water Warm Duck Profit You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Spring River Water Warm Duck Prophet, Xiao Jun, while it's still early, take the morning bus back to the village, lend out the three ox carts of the production team, and then call Lu Feng and his team. No matter how late it is, make sure to rush to the county today. Jiang Xiaobai turned to look at Wang Xiaojuan's instructions, but before he could finish speaking, Song Weigua interrupted him. No need, you're lucky. We happen to be sending a batch of goods to Shanma Commune today and bringing them to the countryside for you. Song Weigua looked at Jiang Xiaobai and smiled, saying that he had graduated from university and returned to work in the county factory, although this era was still in the era of planned economy. But Song Weigua could feel the changes since the beginning of this year. The warm waters of the Chunjiang River and the Duck Prophet, he was also willing to form a good relationship with people like Jiang Xiaobai. Thank you, that's too much, Jiang Xiaobai thanked Song Weiguo for another moment before turning around and saying, Xiao Jun, you should wait in the village and take out all the thick clothes we brought in winter and lay them on the ox cart. The road back to the village is not easy to walk, so don't knock on the jar. Okay, don't worry, Xiaobai, 
Wang Xiaojun responded and turned around and ran away. Jiang Xiaobai gave Lu Aigua ten yuan and instructed him to buy white sugar and red paint, and then they walked towards the glass factory with Song Weigua. I'll shout out to you, brother. You're really swift and decisive in your work, you're amazing. Song Weigua looked at Jiang Xiaobai with a smile and complimented him, thinking that Jiang Xiaobai was a person who did things. Not only does one have courage in their actions, but they can also think of details such as laying thick winter clothes on a cart to prevent collisions. Song Gu, I really rely on your help this time. Otherwise, the yellow peaches in our mountain will be wasted. You don't know how bitter the rural winter can be. After Jiang Xiaobai finished speaking, Song Weigua chuckled twice. The first time, he wanted 5,000 cans, and later he wanted the remaining 15,000 cans to store and eat for himself in winter. He he de, do you believe me or not? Song Weigua didn't bring up the topic just now, and the two of them chatted all the way to the glass factory. Yesterday, Grandpa Wang was supposed to change shifts. The gatekeeper was another young man, and as he watched Jiang Xiaobai and Song Weigua together, he even took the initiative to smile at Jiang Xiaobai. After signing the contract, Lu Aigua returned with a woven bag on his back. He bought 70 pounds of white sugar for one kilogram and two barrels of red paint for the remaining three yuan. After returning, I will move the glass bottles that have been packed into boxes onto the liberation truck with Jiang Xiaobai. A box of 100 can head bottles, a total of 50 boxes, which happens to be able to be transported to the countryside by a glass factory car. Otherwise, relying solely on a cart would take an unknown amount of time to retrieve them. Chief Song, thank you very much. Don't worry, as soon as you have money, I will settle the final payment. Jiang Xiaobai waved before getting on the truck. Song Weigua nodded without saying anything. By noon, they had already arrived at the village, and Wang Xiaojun, Lu Feng, and others were already waiting with three ox carts. Jiang Xiaobai handed the truck driver the two white flower mantu that Lao Song had decided not to eat in the morning. He took the corn flour cake that Wang Xiaojun handed over and chewed two mouthfuls before he was ready to unload, but the truck driver stopped him. So where is your village? I'll give you a free ride. If you can't go on the road and unload, you can save some energy. The truck driver said while eating white flour mantu. Okay. Thank you so much. Jiang Xiaobai didn't expect any unexpected joy. The truck drove all the way to a place three miles away from Jianhua Brigade before stopping. The road ahead was too narrow to pass. The truck driver left abruptly in black smoke amidst a chorus of gratitude. Xiao Bai, are these all canned bottles? How many are there? Lu Feng and others curiously touched the box and asked. All right, let's pull it back first. It's not very far from the village road. Leave one person to watch the goods, while others use ox carts to pull them. People resist, hurry up and get them back for me. Jiang Xiaobai said, taking the lead in resisting a box and setting off unsteadily. Xiaobai, let me do it. Take a break. You've been tired enough these past few days. We can do these tasks. Lu Feng quickly said. Jiang Xiaobai shook his head and walked steadily forward, carrying the box. Fifty boxes were neatly placed in the yard, and fourteen educated youth also gathered together, looking at Jiang Xiaobai standing on the steps. Comrades, I announce that starting from tomorrow, we will officially produce canned peaches. Our canned peaches are called educated youth canned peaches. Jiang Xiaobai used to think that when he said, comrade, while watching TV, it was either ambiguous or foolish. But today he realized that the word, comrade, doesn't care about like dot minded people. Okay, okay. Waves of cheers came from below and persisted for a long time. Jiang Xiaobai pressed his hands weakly, and there was a sudden silence in the yard. The movement and stillness made Jiang Xiaobai extremely excited. I'll divide the work below, Zhang Yenmei. Arrived. 
Zhang Yenmei stood out from the crowd. Tomorrow, you will take your four female educated youth to make canned peaches, and select four male comrades. Yes. Lu Feng. Lu Feng's voice was particularly loud. 2. Starting tomorrow, you will take four people up the mountain to pick yellow peaches. Yes. Lu Aigua, you used to work as an accountant and will now be responsible for bookkeeping. Wang Xiaojun, after you have figured out the roads and distribution of nearby villages, you will be responsible for sales. Jiang Xiaobai arranged things one by one, and after having a bite of food at night, he went back to his room early to sleep. These past two days have been really troublesome. But the other city youths in the yard were not sleepy, and gathered around the eight immortals' table eagerly listening to Wang Xiaojun and Lu Aigua talk about their glorious deeds in the county town. This is a 5,000 can head bottle. Do you know how much it costs to buy it back at the normal price? A can head bottle costs 20 cents, and it costs 1,000 yuan, 1,000 yuan. Wang Xiaojun said, and the urban youth below exclaimed in amazement. A thousand yuan, they haven't seen so much money since childhood. Comrade Wang Xiaojun, please tell us quickly how Xiaobai did it. Our total cost is only 100 yuan. Yeah, don't be too presumptuous. Hurry up and say it, everyone is curious. Lu Feng and Zhang Yenmei spoke one after another, and there was also a lot of commotion around them. What's the rush? Can't we speak slowly? The three of us met Old Song from the glass factory in the county town and made our demands. Wang Xiaojun may have been a storyteller in his ancestors, making a group of young people feel as if they were there. When he heard Song Weigua's refusal, he felt extremely disappointed. When he heard the scene of Feng Huelu turning around and meeting the gatekeeper Wang, he applauded and cheered. When Song Weigua agreed to pay Jiang Xiaobai five cents a can bottle and one dot third of the deposit in advance, everyone burst into cheers. A group of young people in the yard were cheering, while the person involved, Jiang Xiaobai, was lying on the Kong, soundly asleep, not knowing what he had dreamed of. A faint smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. End of this chapter